The Kaleidoscope has become a very popular tool in the modern day era for innovations. However, as an anesthesiologist, I have seen that many individuals have not been trained on it to the same level that we have in our residency training. So we created this video as an answer. This video is a live demonstration of how to use the Glidescope with numerous carve out sections to illustrate important, but what could be otherwise missed as subtle points. Our effort here is to give you the same training that I have been lucky enough to have. Thanks for watching and thanks for learning with us. Medical Specialists Associates, making medical education more accessible. So here we are gonna demonstrate use the GlideScope. What I want you to note here is that what we do have is we have a nasal cannula on our patient that'll help us have more oxygenation during the time uh, of when we're trying to intubate. We're bag masking right now. And what I'm gonna use for uh, induction medications is going to be uh, propofol and ketamine. It's a nice combination. The ketamine helps reduce the hypotension from the propofol. And with the um, propofol, you get really nice laryngeal muscle relaxation. Um, a normal intubation dose of propofol is about 200 milligrams. It's a two milligrams per kilogram. Our particular patient here is about 100 kilograms. That's why I, I mentioned that. So now recall with the glide scope that what we're going to do is we're going to go down straight back. And then when we go straight back here, now we're gonna turn our attention to here and we can see as I go straight back, straight back right there, here's our epiglottis, it's very floppy in him. I go into the vollecula a little more. When I go into the vollecula, I hit that hyoepiglottic ligament. I pull up and out in a 45 degree angle towards the ceiling. So in our first carve out here, what I want to take the time to point out to you is some pretty amazing anatomy. What you see here is the epiglottis, and then deep behind here is the vollecula, and you see the hyoepiglottic ligament. Here when I play it live, keep your eyes here and you can see the hyoepiglottic ligament really well. However, what I also want you to note is, is that we appear to be pretty far away from this vollecula. Remember now, I'm using the glide scope and I want the tip to go into the vollecula. Keep that in mind here as I progress on. So now our next step would be to advance our tip of the glide scope into the vollecula and then the pull up on a 45 degree angle as I was mentioning in the video. However, in this carve out, I wanna take my time to point out to you something that might be subtle to you if you're a beginner with the glide scope. Notice here that how I'm trying to go into the molecula, I go in and I pull up, but I appear to be pretty distant from the glottic opening. And I know from doing this so many times that I could get a better view and something just didn't seem right. So what happened in this particular segment here is that someone gave me a size three blade for a gentleman instead of a size four, and it was just too small. And so I wasn't able to get that tip really far down in here where I wanted to, to where when I lift it up, my camera would be closer and I'd be able to see this better. So that's why it looks dark. So let's take a closer look at the difference between the size three and size four blades. So in this particular carve out, I wanna go over why we're not getting that crystal clear view of the glottic opening. It's because I was using a size three blade in a gentleman. And for the most part, when we use the glide scope, we use a size four blade for men and a size three for women. Of course, you can have a very large female and then perhaps then it would be maybe appropriate to use a four. But broadly speaking, again, a four for gentlemen and a three for ladies. So when I was going in with my size three blade, 
I couldn't quite get as deep into the molecular as I wanted to and then lift up and see everything so clear. You can see that the camera was a bit further away and the view seemed a little diff distant. And here, what I show you right here on the screen is our size three blade. And you can see here how short this particular segment is here. So here's the camera. And then this is the tip that would be in the molecular and the camera would be looking at the glottic opening. Over here, what I show is the size four blade. Now notice how much bigger this particular component is here from the camera, which would be back here all the way here. So because that segment is bigger, if I was using that, this particular blade, and this was in the molecular, and then I pulled up, I would have a more appropriate view that we're more accustomed to that actually we'll see right now in this particular segment. But just prior to me showing you the next segment, I just want to emphasize this point because in the heat of the moment, when it's maybe an emergency intubation and people are scrambling to get things together, it could be easy for someone to mistakenly put a size three blade on when you're intubating a gentleman. Or you might be working with other people that are just less experienced. And so if you find yourself having difficulties using the GlideScope and you're not getting the view that you think you should, this is something to keep in mind. So now we'll back up here just a little bit and we'll use a size three blade in a female patient. And we'll begin again as we're entering the mouth and we'll start to see what views we get as we work our way down towards the glottic opening. In this crop out of the GlideScope, we're going to take our time and point out important parts of the anatomy that you should recognize as you begin to use the GlideScope and enter the mouth and get your view of the glottic opening. So here we're first starting to get ready to enter the mouth. And as we do, you'll notice a nasal trumpet here and the patient's upper lip right here. And when we go in, we're going to go in and we're going to start to follow the base of the tongue. And here, as we're following the base of the tongue, one of the first structures we come to right here is the uvula. And you'll notice here also that we have a nasogastric tube in. This is really nice because the nasogastric tube is going to show you where the esophagus is and obviously where we don't want to be, which is the esophagus. We want to be in the glottic opening. So here we're going to continue to get our view and adjust ourselves, follow the base of the tongue down. And then what comes into view rather quickly here are the arytenoids. And here would be the esophagus right here with our nasogastric tube coming into the esophagus. We also see some heavy secretions right here. This particular patient was intubated because of aspiration. So what I wanted to show you really well was the epiglottis and the molecular. So what I do is I withdraw back here a little bit and I get that base of the tongue right there and I come back in again. And here I have that nice view of the epiglottis right here and the molecular behind it and the arytenoids here. And here again is the nasogastric tube coming into the esophagus down here. So now the next stop, next part here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna advance the tip into this follicular right here to press down that high epiglottic ligament and begin to pull down the epiglottis and pull off the epiglottis even further by pulling up towards the ceiling at a 45 degree angle. So here we go, I come into that follicular a little more and then I pull up towards the ceiling and that's that beautiful view that I get right here. Here when I pause, the epiglottis is up here. Here's an arytenoid, here's an arytenoid here. Here are the false vocal cords. Another one over here. The true vocal cords are here and here, and the glottic opening is here. It's glistening a little bit because of some of the secretions. As we go live here, you can see it open right here really nicely. And here I'm just optimizing the view for the camera right here. Here's the glottic opening. This is what you wanna see. And you can see the heavy secretions in the back right here from the patient's aspiration event. So here the endotracheal tube is coming in. It's coming in. And here you can notice the endotracheal cuff right here. So we're going to want this past the cords when we get in. But even here you can notice that this is curved. And as we're coming in, we're curving and we're going to begin to hit that anterior portion of the trachea. And so what you'll notice here is that as I come in, I hit that anterior portion of the trachea and I'm going to pause. And here I'm telling my assistant to pull back this rigid stylet just a little bit, and then I slide off, and there you can see the cuff come into the vocal cords right there, right past it. And then here what I do is I just optimize the picture a little bit. And if you come back here a little bit, this was really nice. You could really see really nicely that molecular right here. Again, the epiglottis, 
the false vocal cords, my endotracheal tube through the glottic opening. You no longer see the cuff, so we're in good positioning. And that concludes this part of the demonstration. This last point that we saw in the video is so important that we want to take a moment to emphasize it. And that is, is that the stylet of the glidescope is so curved that very often when we come in, we hit the anterior portion of the trachea, and that makes it difficult for us to then slide the endotracheal tube off the stylet, unless if we know how to make the tip a little flexible. And so we want to have another carve out here to show you this from one of our prior videos. We did see it in the video, but we saw it from within the mouth, within the oral pharynx. So now we'll take a look at it from outside. Now, oftentimes what's going to happen here with Paul is that when you come in on this angle, you're going to hit that anterior portion of the trachea. So when you hit that anterior portion of the trachea, you can no longer advance. That's when it's important to pull the stylet back just a little bit. It makes this tip a little fluid and bendable. And then you're able to advance the ET tube off because the tip becomes flexible. So in this last crop out, now I want to pick up where we left off. We have the ET tube in our patient and we need to take the stylet out. But it's not that easy with the rigid stylet of the GlideScope. Recall that it's very curved and it's rigid. So therefore, if our ET tube now is in our patient and we simply try to come straight up out here as we would maybe normally do with a non-rigid stylet where you can just easily take it out, you're going to meet resistance. And so what's the key here? The key here is to follow the curvature of the stylet and to take it out as we turn this towards the patient's chest and abdomen like this, and then it comes out smooth and easy. So let's watch this here in this next segment. Now watch here, and what you want to do to take this out is have this move like this, and it comes out a lot easier. And then the device is in. We'll put the cuff up. And then at the end of the procedure, it's very important then to verify that you're in with color change. And then my color change is positive. We'll check for breath sounds to make sure that we're not main stem. And we will order a chest x-ray. Thank you so much for watching and learning with us today. If you're interested in taking this class for credit, or if you're interested in our other services, such as our direct clinical care services, please visit our website at www.med-specialist.net or click on the link in the description below. Also, make sure you subscribe to our channel to stay up to date on our most current content and educational opportunities.